James Randi mastered magic to go on a one-man crusade against bullshit artists. At 89, Randall James Hamilton's Wingy is as beloved and skeptical as ever. The former magician has now authored 10 books and starred in a biographical documentary in 2014, An Honest Liar. In almost nine decades, Randy has exposed and probably pissed off countless illusionists and psychics. But what goodwill he's lost in those people, he's made up for in droves as one of the most lauded skeptics of our time. Magical thinking, you know, is a slippery slope. Sometimes it's harmless enough, but other times it's quite dangerous. Personally, I'm opposed to that kind of fakery, so I have no reservations at all about exposing these people and their illusions for what they really are. Zwingli was born in Toronto, Canada on August 7, 1928. From an early age, he showed an insatiable interest in math and, most notably, magic. His obsession with the latter grew so great, he dropped out of school at 17 to join a traveling carnival as a magician and escape artist. He adopted James Randi as his stage name and The Amazing Randi as another moniker. But unlike other magicians, Randi always claimed his tricks could be explained with logic, not supernatural ability. Randi toured the world performing anxiety-inducing stunts inspired by Harry Houdini. In 1956, he sealed himself in an underwater coffin, only to one-up himself 20 years later by freeing himself from a straitjacket suspended over Niagara Falls. He was even invited to play the executioner and mad dentist on Alice Cooper's 1973 to 1974 Billion Dollar Babies tour because he was an expert at making the macabre look real. Around the same time as his tour with Alice Cooper, Randy had some of his most famous brush-ups with so-called mystics and mediums. In 1972, he exposed Israeli psychic Yuri Geller on live television. In the 80s, he exposed an even more egregious charlatan, faith healer Peter Popoff. Yuri was a jerk, but Popoff was a real asshole. Popoff preached a prosperity theology, claiming that when money was donated to his church, God would make a divine transfer into that person's divine account. So he invited terminally ill people to come to his church and fill out prayer cards. When he was on the air, his wife read these prayer cards to him over a hidden earpiece, which allowed Popoff to appear like he had psychic ability into random audience members' lives. Randy proved Popoff was a fraud by picking up the radio transmissions between Popoff and his wife and overlaying them onto a video of Popoff's performances. It turns out that God's frequency, I didn't know he used radio, yeah. is 39.170 megahertz, and God is a woman, obviously, and sounds exactly like Popoff's wife, Elizabeth. Since then, Randy has exposed countless paranormal types, which has sometimes landed him in legal trouble. He's faced numerous libel lawsuits, but in a 2007 interview, said he's never paid even one dollar or one cent to anyone who's ever sued him. Though Randy doesn't do many live appearances these days, he's committed as ever to exposing scammers hiding under the guise of spirituality. While Randy's fans look forward to his next move, whatever that may be, they know the outcome will be worth the wait. Hell, it might even be magical. Except it won't, because magic isn't real. <laughs> <laughs>